Welcome to Lecture Online. Here's our first example of how to use trig substitution to solve this particular integral. Substitution you need to use for the square root of a squared minus x squared is always going to be x is equal to a times the cosine, oh, not the cosine, uh, the sine of theta. And of course, let's write the words let x equal that because of course it's not equal to that. We're just going to let it equal that and then substitute that into the integral. Now we're also going to need the relationship on the triangle, so it's always good to write down the triangle. A is the hypotenuse, x is the opposite side, there's theta, the adjacent side is going to become the square root of a squared minus x squared, and that's of course related to this right here. And here you can see that the sine of theta, by definition, is going to be equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, which is x over a, and that's where this trick substitution came from. Now let's go ahead and substitute and see what we get. This can now be written as the integral of the square root of a squared minus, instead of writing x squared, we're going to write this quantity squared, which is a squared times the sine square of theta. And we can't forget the dx, of course, if we're going to have a theta in the integral, we need to replace dx by something else. So what we're going to do here is, to is find the derivative dx d theta is equal to a times the derivative of the sine is the cosine of theta. And then if we write dx is equal to a times the cosine of theta d theta, we can then go ahead and substitute that in for dx as well. The next thing we're going to factor out an a squared and put on the outside of the square root. So this is equal to the integral of a times the square root of 1 minus the sine square of theta. And instead of dx, we're going to write a times the cosine of theta d theta. And notice we have an a times the a that can come to outside the integral sign, and 1 minus the sine square theta can become the cosine square theta. So this becomes a squared times the integral of the square root of the cosine square of theta times the cosine of theta times d theta. Now the square root of the cosine squared theta is simply the cosine of theta, so this is equal to a squared times the integral of the cosine of theta times the cosine of theta times d theta, which of course can be written as a squared times the integral of the cosine squared of theta d theta. So now we've turned this integral into this integral. Now you still need to figure out the trick for this particular integral. What we're going to do here, we're going to say this is equal to a squared times the integral of and this can be written instead as 1 half times 1 uh, plus the cosine of 2 theta d theta. So the trig identity of the cosine squared theta is that it's, it can be written as 1 half times 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta. And if we do that, the 1 half can come outside the integral sign. So this is equal to a squared divided by 2 times the integral of the quantity 1 plus the cosine of 2 theta d theta. Okay, now we can distribute this, but notice we have a cosine of 2 theta and we don't have the proper differential. We need a 2 d theta there. So what we need to do here is rewrite this integral as follows. This can be written as a squared divided by 2 times the quantity, the first is the integral of 1 times d theta, simply d theta, and that's easy to integrate. But now we need something else here. We need plus 1 half times the integral of the cosine of 2 theta times 2 d theta. Okay, what did I just do? Notice I had the cosine of 2 theta d theta. I need a 2 d theta there in order to integrate that. But of course, when I multiply this times 2, I have to divide by 2 as not to change anything on the integral. Now I'm ready to integrate. Let's see what happens. This is equal to a squared divided by 2. The integral of d theta is simply theta plus 1 half times the integral of the cosine of 2 theta. Let's see here. The derivative sign is the cosine. Therefore, the integral of the cosine is the sine again. I always have to worry about the, the, if that's a positive or negative. It's a positive sine of 2 theta. The 2d theta drops out, and of course we can't forget about the constant of integration. Okay, what's next? Well, let's see here. Theta needs to be expressed somehow in terms of x. How do we do that? 
Well, notice if the sine of theta is equal to x over a, then theta is equal to the arc sine of x over a. So therefore, we can write theta as the arc sine of x over a. This becomes a squared over 2 times, instead of theta, we write what theta is equal to, which is the arc sine of x divided by a. And there's a restriction to a. a has to be a positive value. What about the sine of 2 theta? Hmm. For this, we need another identity. And it turns out that the sine of 2 theta can be written as 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. Because the sine of theta times the cosine of theta is 1 half the sine of 2 theta. And we still need the plus constant of integration. Now we need to find the reverse substitution for the sine and the cosine. Now the sine is easy, we already have that. We know that the sine of theta is x divided by a. This can be written as a squared divided by 2 times the arc sine or the inverse sine of x over a plus 1 half times 2, that disappears, cancels out. The sine of theta is x divided by a. But the cosine of theta, well, let's go back to the definition of the cosine relative to this um, relative to this triangle right here. So the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side, which is the square root of a squared minus x squared divided by the hypotenuse, which is a. So the cosine of theta can be written as that. So instead of writing the cosine of theta, we write the square root of a squared minus x squared divided by a. And now we can't forget about the constant of integration. So we're basically done now. Maybe the only thing we want to do is multiply this in here and rewrite it as follows. a squared divided by 2 times the arc sine, the arc sine of x over a. And when I multiply this times this, notice that the a squares disappear. I get plus 1 half times x times the square root of a squared minus x squared. And finally, plus a constant of integration. And of course, there's a number of ways in which you can leave the final answer. But this is definitely one of them. And that would then be the integral of the square root of a squared minus x squared. Notice that even with the trigonometric substitution, which at least makes it possible to find the integration or the integral of this, it's still a lot of work. But, the def but basically what it comes down to, when you see something like the a squared minus x squared, the first thing you're going to do is substitute for x a times the sine of theta. When you do that, you can factor out the a, you end up at 1 minus the sine squared of theta, that becomes the cosine squared of theta, take the square root of simply the cosine, and then you have to find something for the dx, so you take x equal a sine theta, take the derivative, solve for dx, substitute that, and then at that point you have to use probably one or two or more trig identities in order to eventually make it all the way through, and at the very end, when the answer is in terms of the sine and the cosine and so forth, then you want to reverse a substitution to get back to the answer in terms of x. That's how we do that. It looks like a lot of work, but at least you're able to do it now. And all of these types of integrals work exactly the same way. It comes down to substituting for x equal a sine theta, x equal tangent of theta, or x equal the secant of theta. And that's how we do that.